Welcome back. We're continuing the module on programming SDNs, and we are now in the second part of a lesson on composing SDN control. In this lesson, we will look at a programming language and controller called Pyretic that allows programmers to compose SDN policies and provides other primitives that make writing complex SDN policies easier. Pyretic is an SDN language and a runtime. A language is simply a way of expressing high-level policies. And the runtime compiles those policies to OpenFlow match action rules. Pyretic allows programmers to specify policies on what are called located packets. A programmer can write a policy based on a combination of the packet and its location in the network. Pyretic provides several features that we will look at in detail in this lecture. The first is the ability to write a network policy as a function. In other words, Pyretic allows the programmer to write a function that takes as input a packet and then returns packets at different locations in the network. Pyretic provides Boolean predicates. In contrast to OpenFlow's primitive match action rule set, Pyretic allows the programmer to write policies using conjunctions and predicates such as AND, OR, and NOT. Pyretic provides virtual packet header fields that allow the programmer to refer to both the actual packet headers as well as virtual headers such as the packet's location, tags that the operator might have applied to the packet, and so forth. Finally, Pyretic provides both parallel and sequential composition operators to make it possible for the network operator to write complex policies by composing simpler ones. Let's take a look at each of these features in a bit more detail. In OpenFlow, network policies are simply match action operations based on bit patterns in a packet header. This can not only be very difficult for a programmer to write because it's so low level, but it also is very difficult to reason about. In contrast, in Pyretic, policies are functions that map packets to other packets in the network. Here's a summary of some of Pyretic's policies. The identity returns the original packet. None returns the empty set. Match returns the identity if the field in the packet matches a particular value, otherwise it returns the empty set. Mod returns the same packet, but sets the virtual packet header field to a specific value. Forward sends the traffic out a particular output port simply by modifying the output port attribute of that packet. Flood returns one packet for each port on the network spanning tree. Let's take a look at Boolean predicates. In OpenFlow, packets either match on a rule or they fall through to the next match action rule. This makes it very difficult to express policies that involve conjunctions or negation. In contrast, Pyretic's match function outputs either the packet or nothing, depending on the value of the predicate. For example, here's a conjunction of two match predicates that will return packets that match on either destination IP address 10.0.0.3 or destination IP address 10.0.0.4. Virtual packet headers are a unified way of representing packet metadata. In Pyretic, a packet is nothing more than a dictionary that maps a field name to a value. We can apply the match predicate to retrieve packets that arrive on a particular input port that are located at a particular switch or that have a particular destination MAC address. The mod function also allows the programmer to modify this packet metadata or add additional packet header fields. Policy composition allows the programmer to write more complex policies by composing simpler ones. As we discussed in the previous lesson, there are two types of composition. Sequential, which performs one operation followed by the next, such as matching on a particular destination IP address, and then sending the result to a forwarding policy, which forwards on a particular output port. 
and parallel composition, which performs both operations simultaneously. Here's an example that forwards packets out one output port or another depending on the value of the destination IP address. This operation is simply a parallel composition of two other policies, each of which use sequential composition. Traffic monitoring allows the programmer to create a query to see certain packet streams. For example, the programmer can create a query that returns the first packet with a unique source MAC address at a particular switch. Given that packet stream, the programmer can then register a callback that executes a function on the resulting stream of packets. These callbacks are invoked to handle each new packet that arrives for the query. We'll see an example of callbacks very soon when we look at the implementation of a learning switch in Pyretic. Dynamic policies are policies whose forwarding behavior changes over time. Dynamic policies are represented as a time series of static policies where the current value is always the self.policy variable. A common programming idiom in Pyretic is to set a default policy, use a query to return a packet stream, and then register a callback that updates the policy based on the packet query stream. We'll now look at two examples that use dynamic policies. The first is a learning switch. We'll then take the learning switch and use sequential composition to build a firewall on top of that learning switch. Let's go back to the topology we looked at a few modules ago with three hosts connected to a single switch. Now we'll attach a pyretic controller to that topology that implements a simple learning switch. In the program that we'll look at, every first packet with a new source MAC address at the switch is read by a query will register a callback for that query that updates that policy with a new predicate every time a packet arrives. As before, I'll start with a controller, but this time we'll run a pyretic controller that implements a program called Simple Learner, which is a simplified version of the Mac Learner that is distributed with pyretic. Now I will start a simple three-node topology in Mininet, and we see that the controller now sees the OpenFlow switch and when we run the ping all command all of the hosts can see one another. Here is the entire learning switch in a nutshell. The main function simply returns the Mac learner function. The Mac learner function creates a dynamic policy object from the learn function defined above. The learn function sets an initial state. That initial state generates a query which returns the first packet with a unique source MAC address and switch. We then register a callback function for that query called learn new MAC and set a default forwarding policy of flooding all of the packets out every port. The learn new MAC address callback updates the forwarding policy as follows. The new policy includes a predicate to match on a particular destination MAC address and switch port that forwards the packet out the resulting port that it just learned as the input port for that source MAC address. After updating that forwarding policy, we then call update policy. Update policy updates self.policy with a parallel composition of the forwarding policy that we just redefined and the query which continues to return the first unique source MAC address seen at a particular switch. Now let's return to our topology and instead run a controller that implements a firewall. Our firewall is going to behave just like our learning switch, except it will now also first apply some firewall rules 
to block certain traffic before implementing the learning switch policy. We can implement the firewall by creating a dynamic firewall policy and then registering a callback on the stream of packets that checks the firewall rules. We will then sequentially compose the resulting firewall policy with the learning switch policy that we just looked at. In the case of Pyretic, the firewall implementation is a whole lot simpler. Instead of being about 250 lines of code, as we saw with the POX controller, the equivalent function in Pyretic can be implemented in about 30 or 40 lines of code. Let's take a quick look at the Pyretic implementation of the firewall. First we see that Pyretic returns a dynamic firewall policy sequentially composed with the dynamic learning switch which we just looked at. The firewall policy itself is quite simple. This line of code performs parallel composition over a set of match policies. Each match policy corresponds to a tuple entry in the firewall hash table. To add a rule to the firewall hash table, we simply add a value with the key of the switch and the source MAC address. We then update the policy to include a match statement corresponding to that switch and source MAC address. Any packet that does not match on a switch or source MAC address in that firewall hash table will not match on this parallel composition of policies and hence will be dropped. Now, if we start our simple firewall and a three node mininet topology, we can see that H3 cannot ping H1, but H2 can ping H1. In summary, Pyretic makes writing complex policies easy. It provides the ability to implement a network policy as a function. It offers predicates on packets. It allows the programmer to operate on virtual packet headers. And it provides methods for performing both sequential and parallel composition of policies. Composition makes it easy for policies to build on one another. In the next lesson, we will use what we've learned in this lesson to implement event-driven network policies.